So um, now I will proceed with introducing myself. I'm a Berkeley professor and a teacher of classical yoga and Qigong. My two spheres of action are the university and the teaching of spiritual healing and transformation. In both of them, in the university and in the teaching of spiritual healing and transformation, I teach through a combination of intellectual discussion and direct experience. I studied yoga in India 30 years ago and graduated with a degree to teach yoga in India. The yoga that I learn and I teach is based in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. So it's the eight limb yoga that they practice so well here in Mount Madonna. It integrates all the limbs of yoga, the philosophy as well as the physical and the meditative practice to facilitate embodying consciousness or what is usually referred to as the union of mind, body and spirit, although in our discussions we'll see that there are not three different entities, but just one that functions completely together. Another very powerful spiritual practice, which has been tested for as long as yoga, yoga was tested in India, and this one comes instead from China, uh, but has relatively recently come to the West, is Qigong. Qigong can be translated as cultivating vital energy. Gong means practice, and qi, like prana, is a vital energy. It's a system of a spiritual develop, development and healing. Both yoga and qigong, depends how you count, could, we could say that goes far as back as 4,000 years old. Uh, they are empirical sciences that study the body as energy. I have studied, practiced, and teach several forms of qigong. It's fascinating to me how the yoga and the Qigong systems complement each other and helps us understand more deeply the connections between our physical body, our mind, and our spirit, or rather to experience them as a unity, as a unity that they truly are. So I teach them together, and I'm writing a book about these millenary practices and how they can help us understand and experience our body as a vast energy network and also as a moving field of consciousness. This quest of integrating the intellectual understanding of who we are at the core with the experience of regaining balance and cultivating consciousness is also present in my work as university professor. So about 10 years ago, besides um, seeing that it was necessary to help my students to create meaning at a personal level, which we do through autobiographical writing and poetry and working with myth, etc. Um, I realized that there was a social dimension that was lacking in academic training. I had been seeking for a method to empower students so that what they learn would not only have meaning in their lives, but would be a valuable contribution to the community as well. I wanted my teaching to contribute in creating and nurturing communities. I found this dimension in service learning. This is a method by which students put 15 or 20 hours of voluntary service in a non-governmental organization of their choice, and they reflect about what they learn through their experience and relate that to what is being discussed in class. So there is, on the one hand, the intellectual learning of the theories or uh, in this particular course that I'm referring to is one that uh, I designed with the help of Fritjof, and it was called uh, Globalization and the New Global Civil Society. And so we were on the one hand reading a book called Alternatives to Economic Globalization, and on the other hand also reading another book, um, Pedagogy of the Oppressed by Paulo Freire. And so the students were then going into NGOs of their choice and coming and seeing how some of the concepts that we were discussing, either about globalization and uh, ways of organizing in communities, was reflected in that particular NGO, but also about how was their exchange <coughs> with the people that they were trying to serve. So every journal, every week, they were reflecting on how did I actually embody this consciousness? How did I interact? What could I do better next week? Um, when I go back to try to serve people in prisons or uh, young people in Oakland or battered women or uh, in schools or whatever it is that they were doing. This method helps build bridges with the community, which is another problem we have with the university, um, that the students come and they get a training, but it's a training in a 
in a very enclosed environment and so when they come out the logical thing would be that they look for a job with corporations and so the idea is that if we create bridges between the university and the community they already have some contact in some other kinds of organizations and don't need to necessarily look for the corporations and also they have experience of empowerment because when they are used, when they are helping, they are doing service with other people that are more needed than them, they feel that whatever they, they know is being used in a helpful way. My experience as a university professor has made me realize also the need and the potential for changes that each one of us can bring forth in our individual spheres of action. Although I was the first one to ever use the method of service learning in my department, uh, now the new chair and the new head of language courses um, are considering the possibility of implementing this method in content and language courses throughout the departmental curriculum. And we are also establishing links with other departments in, our, in UC Berkeley and other universities to then um, offer the students a multidisciplinary experience of service learning. Fritjof often says when he does analysis of nonlinear uh, structures, he says sometimes minute changes produce uh, large scale consequences. And this just started with him talking about the work they were doing in the Center for Eco-Literacy with education for primary school and secondary school teachers. And I said, well, why don't we take this to the university? And so he helped me with uh, what could be some of the readings and you know, what could be some of the people that perhaps could come from non-governmental organizations. I added the component of service learning and then I worked, it's, it's a lot of work, but it's very rewarding. I worked with the students when they were contacting the different organizations and uh, when the reports were coming back. And they worked also with technology, they created a website and in one of the uh, groups that was doing that. Global Exchange was having a program of buy local and so some of my students, the ones that are more prone to buying, they thought, okay, we'll go to <laughs> places that do gifts for Christmas and you know artisan things and whatever and we'll create uh, a website that shows how you can buy locally in places that are not using sweatshops and you know for their products etc so that was just one of the many projects that happened in that course but so it has many possibilities